This picture here represents a reservoir with solid boundaries full of water and a pipe coming out of it going along here and then the water pours out of the pipe and lands in this puddle over here. I'm going to take the water surface of this puddle to be our datum point because we need some datum to define energy. Now what happens is a little parcel of fluid coming in here at some velocity will slow down until at position 2 it's scarcely moving. Eventually it meanders its way down through positions 3 and 4 to position 5 where it's still scarcely moving but it accelerates into the pipe. It's now going much faster in the pipe through position 6, 7, 8, and then it comes out at that velocity at the end of the pipe at 9 and splashes into the puddle. Now if we want to track energy through this whole process, we need to figure out the different components of energy. Now if we go and look at the total energy, then we would expect the total energy to remain the same. And if we put it in terms of elevation units, then the total energy is just the elevation above the datum when it's sitting still at no pressure. So here's our total energy, more or less, right about there at location 2. And when we get to location 6, our total energy should be the same although we'll expect it to have changed from energy of elevation, accelerated down through here, and it's now all kinetic energy. But if there are no losses due to friction, then we expect that the total energy will remain constant all the way across here. So total energy, or total head, because we're expressing it in elevation units, that'll be joules per newton, or just meters, total head, or energy grade line and because we're not allowing for any friction it remains constant all the way across. Now we're looking at the kinetic energy and it's increasing as we move across. Kinetic energy is almost zero uh, when things aren't moving and then it increases when the speed goes up. So over here at location zero our kinetic energy is right down here at the datum point. By the time we get to location six all we've got really is kinetic energy and this little bit of energy due to elevation difference above the datum. So here's our kinetic energy at location 6. Location 5, we're going only slightly faster than 0. So what we'll see along here is kinetic energy meandering along at essentially 0, increasing a little bit and then increasing very sharply at the entrance to the pipe and then it remains constant as we go along the pipe all the way along here. So there's the kinetic energy and that's the dynamic head if we're putting it in elevation units joules per newton or meters of elevation so it's the kinetic energy and that's v squared over 2g. Now, in addition to the kinetic energy, we've got the energy associated with the elevation. So when we start off over here, there's our elevation. And as we proceed along, we move down in elevation to different locations. So by the time we get to location 5, we're down here by the center line of the pipe. And then 6, and so on, finally out to here at this last location. So as we proceed along here, we're looking at an elevation that's dropping down through these locations and then levels off along here. That's the elevation head. It's a potential energy term for elevation. It's in units of joules per newton or just meters. And it is just the height h above the datum point. Then if we go and look at the pressure head, we should be able to see the difference there between different locations. So up here at the beginning, the pressure is quite low. It's atmospheric. It's down here at the datum point. As we go lower in the fluid, the pressure increases. 
hardly any velocity, fluid static supplies more or less, and we get these points for the pressure. Till by the time we get to location five, the fluid's hardly moving, and the pressure is quite high out here. Then, as the pressure is converted into kinetic energy, the pressure will drop until down here we're back at atmospheric pressure again. So here's our pressure head increasing to location 5 and then the conversion into kinetic energy takes us back down to here where our pressure head is now back at the datum point, atmospheric pressure. So that's the pressure head. It's a potential energy in joules per newton or elevation units and it'll be equal to the pressure divided by rho g, density and gravity. Now, taken in combination, all of the energy that we've got has to add up to the total energy. And that's what we see. If we look here, there's no dynamic head, no pressure head, it's all elevation head, and it adds up to the red line. As we proceed along towards location three, the elevation is going down, but the pressure is rising and we're still following straight along this red line. The pressure continues to rise as the elevation drops and we're still on the red line. We get to here, we've got almost all of our elevation transferred into pressure potential energy and the pressure potential energy now converts into kinetic energy of velocity. So we go from a high pressure region to a low pressure region we go from a low velocity region to a high velocity region. This pressure difference is the driving force that causes the acceleration in the fluid. And with no friction, the energy still remains constant. So again, when we're at location six, the sum of these energies, zero pressure, a little bit of elevation, and a lot of kinetic energy brings us back up to the energy grade line. Continue along there, and we still have the same mix of potential kinetic and elevation energy. Finally, another term that we use is the hydraulic grade line. If we look at the combination of the pressure and elevation together, because they're what's driving the flow, we can consider the hydraulic grade line as pressure plus elevation. So here, there's the pressure plus the elevation. Here's the pressure down here. Here's the elevation up here, but the sum is right there. And the sum is still right there. And the sum is still right there. But now the pressure has dropped and the elevation has dropped quite a bit. So we'll see when we get to location six, the sum of the pressure and the elevation is right down here, right with the elevation. And so if we follow this line along, this is the combination of pressure and elevation. It should be right on top of the red one, but I'm just allowing it to be a little bit off. Drops down to here as we go through the pipe entrance and continues along at the same height of the, as the pipe as we go out here. And that's the static head that represents the combination of pressure and elevation together driving the flow. That's equal to H plus P over rho G and it's referred to as the hydraulic grade line, HGL.